That would be, uh, he's the producer for the G3 uh, Media Group online, and uh, we're glad to have Gio Pensano on. Sir? My story is called, My Only Friend Was a Killer. <laughs> and it all started on Halloween night in about 2010. And I had, I had finally gotten the car that I'd always wanted, a red BMW. Oh, I had always wanted it. I finally got it. It was a dream. But like a lot of dreams, there was a dark side to it, too. <laughs> So I was driving down the road, down Tejon Street actually, and I was pretty excited because I had a date with a beautiful vampire. <laughs> and uh, the first sign of the trouble, I could see the blue lights in the background. No siren, but right away I knew what was coming. I'm being pulled over in my new car. The police officer comes up to my window and one of the first things he says is, he goes, Sir, did, did you just buy this car? And I kind of said, you know, proudly, I was like, yeah, yeah, I did. I did. And he goes, well, your temporary license plates have expired by one day. Let me see your registration, proof of insurance. So the officer comes back a while later with his clipboard, and he hands the clipboard to me, and he goes, sir, I'm uh, giving you a ticket for an expired license plate and no proof of insurance. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to show up for a court hearing. So that was about the end of it for now. And I did what I do with a lot of things that I don't really think are that important. I, I drove off and I tossed the papers in the back seat and forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> and everything was fine, and that was really the end of it for, for a while. <laughs> and the trouble really started when I was out in California and I was um, shooting a video for a client and it had been a long hot day of directing in the sun and I'm driving down the road, driving down the freeway in LA uh, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, that court day was today. Wow. And I thought, well, there's nothing I can do about it now. <laughs> so when I got back to Colorado Springs, it wasn't really the first thing that I did, and it wasn't really the second thing, but eventually I was like, oh dang, I better get my shit together and like, get down there and reschedule that court hearing. And I won't lie to you, but I, I have had some uh, experiences with the criminal justice system before, and so I knew because I had missed my court date, there was probably a, a bench warrant that was issued. So. Uh, I remember it was a beautiful sunny day when I decided to finally go down to the courthouse and you know get things taken care of. But before I did, I, I went to the bank and took a bunch of money out because I knew I was going to have to to post a bond. It had happened to me once before. <laughs> not not quite like this, but uh, I had gotten stopped for a speeding ticket, and it was with the city of Colorado Springs, and and I had to go to the city building. And, uh, and pay my ticket, and, and I, yeah, I had to pay a bond and all that, and it was no big deal. I just, you know, I had to give them money and everything was fine. Well, this thing turned out to be a little bit different. This ticket uh, was in the county uh, courthouse. And so anyways, I got my money and I'm headed down, and I looked on the paperwork and found the office where I was supposed to go. And I go in and I stand in line. And finally, my turn comes up, and I, you know, I talk to the lady behind the counter, and I'm a little bit nervous, you know, because I knew that there was, you know, some probably a warrant out. And and I says, uh, you know, I, I missed my court date. I came in to reschedule it, um, and and that's it. And the lady kind of got quiet for a minute, and she says, "Wait here." <laughs> so yeah, about two seconds later, two big police officers with guns on their sides and mace cans, just in case that wasn't enough, um, said, sir, put your hands behind your back. And but I was like, no, no, this, no, I, I brought money to bail my, to bond myself out. I mean, can't I just bond myself out? And the lady behind the counter, with a look of indifference, or boredom, I really couldn't tell which, <laughs> but she goes, no, we don't, we don't take money here. 
maybe upstairs in central booking, they'll, you know, they'll let you bond yourself out. And so, um, led upstairs with handcuffs on, the walk of shame. Yes. They bring me up to central booking, and central booking in the county courthouse is kind of a funny room. It's a big room, and there are all these um, desks, and in front of, they're all in the center of the room, and they all have kind of glass in front of each desk, and the criminals kind of do the walk of shame around mm -hmm. and stop at each little station. Yep. So the first station, you know, it's what's your name, social security number, address, and I'm like, uh, um, well, you know, I just came down to reschedule my court hearing and I brought some money to bond myself out, so can I do that now? And she's like, I, I, I don't know about that. Second window, and by about the third window <laughs> is where I started to lose my cool, because the third window is where they tell you to empty your pockets out. And so I emptied my pockets out and I threw the money on the table and I said, listen, I just came down to bail myself, I mean, to take, you know, reschedule my court hearing, I brought money to bond myself out, I mean, can't I just bond myself out? And this woman is like, uh, no, you can't bind yourself out here. Um, maybe they'll let you do it down at the county jail, but not if you talk to them like that. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay. And I just continued on the walk of shame, fingerprints, photograph, until I get to the final station. And um, you may know this, or you may have seen it in the movie, but it is true. The final point is you get one free phone call. So I picked up the phone and I, I called the mother of my daughter and I, and I said, listen, you know, this is what's going on and you know, I'm, I'm kind of held up here and they're gonna bring me down to the county jail but they said that I can you know, bail myself out down there and she's like, oh my God, do you need any help or anything? And I'm like, no, no, I got it. I mean, I brought money and they said I can bail myself down, you know, out down to the county jail. So that was about it. And uh, it wasn't until about really the evening time, this took quite a while, that uh, they finally brought me and about 30 other uh, criminals in the transport vans um, down to the county jail. And uh, the, there's typically like three or four uh, vans that leave every day uh, and they drive underground into the county jail. And as soon as I got out, you know, I'm handcuffed in the back and, uh, you know, in the vans with, you know, some other people in street clothes, but mostly people that, you know, had already been in jail and had their jumpsuits on and everything. So the first thing that I did is I go right up to the window and I'm like, they, you know, I just had to miss my court date and they said that I could bail myself out down here. I brought money. I don't have the money anymore, but I guess it must be with my stuff and everything. Oh, and the lady behind the counter, again, with this kind of look of indifference, says, uh, well, the sheriff is, is busy right now, so go sit down there on the bench. And everybody is sitting on the bench, kind of waiting for the return to, you know, to go through intake and everything. And I'm still mostly thinking to myself, this is going to work out, the sheriff is going to come out, and he's going to, you know, take my money, and this is going to be okay. But uh, time went by, and pretty soon, the next stage in the process, all right, everybody, follow me. And I'm really thinking, you know, what, what, what about bailing myself out? And, but there was nobody really to talk to. It was like, just come this way. And so the next stage was to, you know, turn your street clothes in for uh, prison car. And uh, I learned something new that I didn't know before. <laughs> Uh, in in uh, in the jail, there's different colors depending on the severity of your crime. <laughs> so there's blue if you're kind of a newbie or you, you know you're not that you didn't cause that much trouble. Uh, orange if you're like really a bona fide felon. And there's another color that I'll I'm going to tell you about here a little bit later. <laughs> so that was it. You know, I traded my clothes in. I got my jumpsuit on, blue jumpsuit and. Uh, I, you know, we're being let off to the next part of this experience. And the next part was being brought down to the south, uh, the south pod of the county jail. And the county jail is set up with all these different pods, probably for different types of people and, you know, the newbies in one place, more or less. 
Anyway, so they're bringing me into the south pod along with about 10 other, 10, 10 other men. And you go through kind of a secure uh, gate and, and you're inside of this big open uh, pod uh, with uh, jail cells on the top and the bottom. So, you know, you can imagine the first thing I did, I see somebody behind the counter and I go right away and I'm like, um, and, and trying to kind of keep my slight panic under control. And I was like, uh, but you know, I just missed a court date and they said I could bail myself out. And uh, the person uh, says, um, he gives me the reply that I really didn't want to hear at all. He says, um, he says, listen, your, your jail cell is 34. I don't know anything about you bailing yourself out. And, you know, lights are out in 15 minutes. So, what can I do? So I, you know, I found my spot and um, I'm thinking to myself, this is really different than what I thought. And I, 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 I've got to find a new way, some, some new way to get out of this whole thing. <laughs> because clearly I'm not going to allowed to be bailed out. So it was the next morning that uh, one of the intake people comes along and they ask you questions. And so the questions are, um, oh, they're like, uh, uh, you know, what are you in here for? Uh, how long have you been here? Are you sick? Um, are you suicidal? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a little creative, and I just thought to myself that I, I just got to get myself moved to a different location because, uh, A, the phones weren't working in this pod, so I couldn't even call out. And everything just going differently than I thought. So I thought, well, you know, I just got to get myself to a different location. So when she asked me that question, you know, are you suicidal? I'm, I'm like, uh, you know, yeah, this whole thing has really caught me off guard. And I, yeah, I, I think I might be suicidal. And so a little bit I know what's going to happen next. But the, uh, pretty soon a couple of armed guards come along and they go, uh, sir, come with us. I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of cool. You know, I get to go to a different spot like I had hoped to. And uh, they took me down, you know, walked down the hall, not very far away, to another pod, and brought me in. And I noticed, as soon as I walked in, that everybody was wearing a very different type of outfit. It wasn't blue. It wasn't orange. It was kind of these gray felt Padded outfits that were held on with, with Velcro straps. <laughs> I'm in the psych ward of the county jail now. <laughs> and, you know, I'm still like, it seemed kind of quiet there, and there wasn't as many people, so the first thing I did is I went up to the <laughs> and I said, you know, I said, you know, I, I just missed my court date, and, and they said I was going to be able to mail myself out. <laughs> And he says, uh, right away, he says, Sir, keep your voice down. You, we, you're only allowed to whisper in here. <laughs> this, this, is one of the, this is one of the rules. And so anyways, I, you know, I get my felt padded suit and join the rest of the population. And uh, the, the guy actually was quite nice. The, uh, the deputy at this particular place, he was quite nice. And he says, um, he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll look into this for you. And he says, but anyways, you know, you're going to appear, uh, you're going to be arraigned in front of the video judge um, this afternoon. And I thought to myself, wow, that's really strange. I'm, I'm like, I produce online video, and now I'm going to be in front of the video judge? <laughs> I'm like, this, maybe this whole technology thing has gone too far. <laughs> but things were looking up, so I kind of settled in. And I looked, you know, and you know, what am I going to do? I, and I just thought, Hi, you know, I'm stuck in here for a while. I might as well you know, make some friends. <laughs> so I look around, and I, I see this one guy. And he's really older than anybody else. He's maybe in his late 50s, early 60s. And I don't know if any of you ever saw the movie uh, All the Pretty Horses with uh, Matt Damon. And in this movie, Matt Damon and his accomplice are um, thrown into a Mexican penitentiary uh, for a crime that they didn't commit. And before the rut in, one of the somewhat nice guards says to them, uh, you know, you're gonna have to make friends in here. Uh, you're gonna have to pay people off and there's favors that are gonna have to be made. And uh, they're like, no, we're not doing that. Uh, but ultimately they do. And 
the, this old gentleman that I see across the hall reminded me a lot of this, the Mexican uh, mafia boss that ran the jail. And he has kind of slicked back hair and kind of beady eyes and uh, about, a, about two days of gray growth. And um, I thought, hey, you know, if I got to make friends, I might as well make friends with the, you know, the top one, top people right away. So <laughs> I go over and I, talk, I sit down at the bench and I, I uh, you know, say hi and I kind of make some jokes about these crazy outfits that we're wearing. And right away he, he starts in with, uh, well, what did you do? And I kind of brought on my toughest kind of voice, and I, I was, well, I, um, I, I missed my court date, I had it, you know, and, I, and, uh, and then, you know, I'm thrown down here in prison, and here I am, and, and uh, so I just, it seemed like the right thing to do to, you know, say the same thing, well, what did you do? And immediately comes out with, um, I killed somebody. And that really wasn't the thing that I wanted to hear. And he got quiet for a minute. And I like to keep up my end of the conversation. But it was one of those awkward moments where I was like, should I keep it going or should I, you know? But you know, luckily he started talking pretty quickly and he didn't stop for quite a long time. And he explained how uh, he had a construction company that did um, gas pipelines down in the Southwest. And he had a whole construction crew and a whole group of uh, laborers and everything. And one night they were went into the small town, and uh, uh, he had gotten into a fight. And the uh, the end result was that somebody was killed, and he was to blame for it. And he went uh, on the run for about ten years. He had been he went up to Alaska and had been. He said he lived a great life. He was you know he had the, about ten years of good times and everything. Uh, but finally, he was in Colorado Springs and got tra stopped for a traffic violation. And they found out, you know, he had jumped bail and threw him in jail. So it was, uh, you know, we then went on to have a great conversation about life and construction companies and where we had come from, and it was all good. And about 4 o'clock that afternoon, uh, I'm brought down to, they were like, okay, you know, you got to come now in front of, you know, your arraignment in front of the video judge. And so I'm handcuffed with my gray felt um, psych ward suit on, no. uh, brought down to the hallway and brought into this big room with about 70 other people in their, you know, blue outfits and their orange outfits, men and women. And finally my turn comes in front of the video judge and I step up and, you know, the judge says, you know, well, what are you in here for? And I said, well, you know, I... The thought about the Arlo Guthrie song about you know we we I, you know we we littered came into my mind, but I really fought the urge to make any funny about this whole thing. And <laughs> I thought you know whatever I could do to get myself out of this, and so you know I told him, and, and uh, he goes well, and you can kind of tell by the look on his face, you know he just he thought it was ridiculous too, but he just had to hold up the you know the uh, the law and you know the the justice of it all, and he says well. I suppose if I give you another court date, you're not going to be missing this one, are you? And I'm like, no, sir, I won't. And so that, um, you know, pretty much came close to the end. It took about another five hours for me to get released from the county jail. And I, you know, I was uh, rescheduled another hearing date. And uh, I went in for that final hearing, or what I thought was going to be the final hearing. And I thought, you know, okay, now they're going to take my money. I'm going to say I'm sorry for having a registration plate that was a day expired, and uh, it'll be all over. So I come into the courthouse, and I sit down, and uh, I look across the room, and uh, a bunch of prisoners are coming in in their orange jumpsuits on the other side, and I, I look across, and it's the killer. And we, uh, we kind of you know look at each other and kind of give each other a nodding glance, and he's in his orange jumpsuit, and... I've got my tweed business jacket on, and and uh, you know we couldn't say anything to each other, but we just kind of gave our you know nod of of knowingness. And finally, the judge comes up and he goes, uh, "Mr. Pensano," and quickly I stood up and I'm like, "Here!" <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at the paperwork, and I you know like I said, I'm thinking that he's going to take you know and he's going to take my money, and this whole thing is going to be over. But he goes. Um, well, I see what you're in here for. Um, 
we're going to have to schedule uh, another hearing. Uh, you can go now. And that was that was uh, about the last time um, that I saw my my friend the killer. Uh, but my story of having to deal with paying for my crimes uh, continued on. 